This is an open letter to Uncle Sam. Here's here's the there's a problem there's a contradiction Uncle Sam in uh, there's a contradiction in democracy. Um, on one hand, you want to choose the most uh, qualified person to become the leader of the tribe. On the other hand, being the leader of the tribe is a is a very an, an exercise in being extrovert. I mean, going around and shaking hands and you know kissing babies and you know being up till three o'clock in the morning with the young crowd because you're the you know you're the at the pyramid of that system of that and you're you're usually people who go become at the pinpoints of politics these are very extrovert people you you cannot be an introvert and enjoy being in the spotlight that you know democracy demands of its politicians P a certain kind of people are attracted to that kind of lifestyle of you know being in the spotlight these kind of people are usually not introverts introverts try to avoid the spotlight so that that's who we are so even if you consider that 50 percent of the population are introverts these introverts who aw avoid the spotlight these introverts are automatically cut out of your political process and we all know that there are more you know brilliant minds in introverts that, that uh, than there are in extroverts extroverts are very you know topical uh, you, you do not have you know time to research anything in specific if you're you know up partying up to three o'clock in the morning as an extrovert so these two usually don't match these two personalities don't match smart people very smart people are usually introverts they they, became, they were smart but they became you know well informed by you know picking up a lot of information really fast so they be, be, had to have you know spend some time picking up this information having an extrovert's lifestyle does not allow for picking up too much information so the system of democracy that says okay we need somebody in the spotlight go up there and be the chief of the tribe and take responsibility to do things okay and who we give the, this job to we give this job to uh you know an extrovert or an introvert we can't give it to introverts because this is a you know spotlight spotlight kind of a deal it, it i mean So that kind of a, what happens is the really smart ones are never in the race because there's really smart ones are, you know, they're not very spotlight kind of deal. And those who end up taking positions in, in, in a democratic political system are very extrovert, very, you know, good old boys let's have a good time everywhere this is the if democracy anywhere eventually reaches this point if, if you you know uh, if you make it showy enough and you know Uncle Sam has one of the showiest 
showiest uh, elections ever possible. Like, it's like, it's like a, uh, it starts, it, it runs for three years and to result, it resulted into one. And three years of election running resulting into, you know, one year of just going for vacation again next election cycle three years of elections so well this this kind of you know over the top you know extravagance of, of you know tough talk and uh, you know patriotic talk and trying to act more patriotic than the other one and this one is acting more trying to act everybody trying to be more I am your man without actually you know ever studying in depth any of these policies so so although there are brightest minds in the world happen to have ended up in Uncle Sam's land, in my view, I might be wrong, but but the system, because it's such a show that only extroverts appreciate, and it's such a you know game show that at the end it has a you know winner, like a wheel of fortune kind of deal, a lot of luck is also involved. And after, after, at the end of this show, you have Al Gore, the educated guy, versus, versus the cowboy, and it was close. So, the, the, the cowboy had no deal. And the cowboy won, Mr. George W. Bush, and it makes you question the system. Uh, who was your last leader and I t who was your last leader and I tell you what kind of show you're running who was your last leader I tell you what kind of show you're running as simple as that and if your last leader was a cowboy was a you know a tough guy n not a thinker but a doer then you probably had a shed show or started a shed show that lasted 20 years instead of you know if it was a smart one of the one of this so many so many so many so many so many smart people that reside in Uncle Sam's land the leader of these many smart people the leader of these is a guy named, you know, Average George, who has, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of lack of knowledge that an average man has. He's not well read, he's not well done, he's just, his last name happens to be Bush. And apparently, you know, somebody owed Mr. Bush a second term because his father didn't get the first, get the second term. And, you know, name familiarity. At the point at which that your population can be manipulated by name familiarity, last name familiarity, and th that's a good thing. Instead of what he has to say, we are at what's his last name. That's a monarchy, folks. When, when the, your last name becomes more important than your last act for good, if your last name becomes more important than your last act for good, then, you know, then, then somebody has not been educating people properly. And that's supposed to be, supposedly, it's a democratic issue in Uncle Sam's land. That's a democratic issue. 
education that they supposedly like to have, but still something like a big chunk of the budget goes into the military, not education, goes into the military, not, you know, tourism. It's, it goes into the military and not into housing, not into health. You make very expensive doctors and those expensive doctors have expensive bills to pay. So, you know, shit. There is very few of them and very few in your population, you know, gets to see a doctor. A large bunch don't. Let's just put it this way. A large bunch still don't. I mean, you say, I mean, I have a feeling general population in North Korea has good access to doctors because somehow the North Koreans have figured out how to make cheap doctors. Cheap in terms of, you know, you don't have to sell a kidney to finish the last year, something like that. Or, you know, go into debt for the rest of your life. So, or, you know, if you can have a rich daddy, that's, you know, that, that would be even better. So the point is this, I mean, if, if, if going this way, you're basically going this way, you're basically going the way of, you know, defending a chicken coop a chicken coop with laser guided weapons with laser beams it's sort of like we are protecting our chicken coop with the laser beams do, do, what is it is being protected because the people are not being invested in education uh, education very expensive and very few can afford it and if they're smart they don't don't go into debt so Edu expensive education, but a very, you know, extravagant military. It's sort of like, okay, uh, why, 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 I mean, why, why not invest more in, you know, friend friendlier industries like tourism like sending your own people facilitating subsidizing subsidizing your people to live overseas for short periods for no more than two years but it produces it will produce good results if 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 some money comes out into education, you want to have a, you want to have something to protect. You want to have something to protect, and that means you know that means investing money in making something really good, then protecting it. Well, this 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 you know and I mean building something good without without arms because if if the if the half the if half of the GDP depends on arms sales either arm sales to the internal government or arms sales over to the friend, friends and allies. If if half the GDP is dependent on that, I think you know, shouldn't be. I mean, if if a lot of jobs depends on you know production of cyanide. Let's say if a lot of jobs are dependent on the production of cyanide. <laughs> Let's say we have to produce cyanide because a lot of the jobs are dependent on it. 
well, you're producing all this cyanide, you know, that deadly, supposedly deadly chemical. You're, you're producing all these cyanides because apparently there are a lot of jobs dependent on it. But then when you produce all these cyanides and you sell these cyanides to your friends as well, these are all lethal. Uh, you know, one somebody's uh, you know looks uh, looks the wrong way to the uh, at the other guy, and the other guy doesn't like it, and suddenly the situation becomes a cyanide party, a war. And let's see, you know, who can kill and maim and injure more of the other side. Well, let's not produce all the cyanide. Let's say, okay, who can send more tourists to other countries? Tourists to other countries. Not weapons, tourists. Tourists. You want to you wanna transfer your culture to them because you say you think your, your culture is better? Well, you transfer it with tourists. You send a young American, young energetic American through a draft system, you bring them in, Send them two years overseas and, you know, problem solved. Proportionally distributed around the world, I'm sure America can, you know, sell whatever Uncle Sam wants to sell as, as far as individuality, democracy, human rights, whatever you want to call it. But just their presence in many of these shitholes, just the presence of Americans is going to be, you know, it comes with some money, you know, at the, at the local shed show, shed shops. At the local shed shops, your tourists, or American tourists, are going to spend money at those shed shops, those hole-in-the-wall restaurants. They're young, they're, you know, uh, they can handle it. They will find little nooks and crannies of, you know, spending money and co having contact with people. If the objective is to take them democracy or individuality or whatever the objective is that you want to transfer to them, it will transfer much better if you do it with tourists than you do it with, you know, soldiers. Soldiers don't translate well. Soldiers everywhere translate as force. And people don't like to, you know, don't like to see a lot of force around them. We feel un 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 unease. We feel threatened, especially if that force is from a foreign, you know, a very far, far nation. So, the whole point of we are there with our soldiers to create stability. No, dude. If you want to create stability, you send tourists, not soldiers, tourists. Tourists, that, that's, that's, that's the only way you can both send the idea of democracy, if that is important to you. Maybe you leave it up to, so, oh, you lo leave it up to the individual to how he wants to show himself to the society in that shed hole in Africa or South America or Asia. He, he will expose exactly what he is and the locals will expose exactly what they are and they will see eventually, very soon they will realize that they are, you know, they're both more alike than dislike. And you will have an actual, you know, the empire would have an actual f foot on the ground on friendly terms with the fucking locals. Just study them. You teach some, teach, teach them. You, you study from them, you teach them, you study from them. Leave it up to your young people. If you say you got a better system, well, they had 18 years, spent 18 years in your educational system. Well, after the 18 years, obviously he, they are Americans. 
Now let's go show America the, the world and let's let America teach the world, these youngsters teach, teach the world by just being their friends. There is no reason for to teaching, just being in that population and having fun. Do whatever. But being in the local population, that close contact, close proximity will affect, you know, the local population. And the local population will, you know, have a small effect on the the newcomer, newcomer because, you know, you know, it's a short period, it's two years, so if the individual, let's say American youngster, 18 year old youngster, if, you know, after two years, if they never want to see that shed hole again, they don't have to. If they do, some, but some do want to, you know, retain some memory, had some good times. They may develop life, life, or a few may develop lifelong connections. But the point is all of this means a better understanding of the planet you're trying to run. So imagine that, imagine that the, all the top lead of everybody in, in China has spent two years in, just, I'm just imagining, after 20 years of this practice, right? Imagine. After 20 years of this kind of practice, you have half of China has have spent two years in the United States and have gone home, and half of the United States has spent two years in China and has gone has, has gone home. I believe. I mean, there would be very little misunderstanding, and there would be, you know, unthinkable this kind of rivalry because you already have roots in some of you have roots in the other country so it, you don't see a reason for bang 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 boom it's really easy folks you gotta this idea of tourism uh, this idea and even and unfortunately even even Hollywood is responsible for this because the explorers the, the, the Star Trek which is the, the the nerdiest you know your policy makers must have if, if they're real policy makers and they're real nerds they know of Star Trek they have seen it they have followed it and you see it started with we are explorers and we are here to learn from the locals and teach the locals from the explorers they they have recently you know the last one that they pumped out was basically a bang bang star wars kind of deal we are good they are evil let's bang them up and it, it's with clear lines of good and evil it started as a you know as an explorer show ended up as a you know war show and folks you want to be explorers you want your population to be explorers to have a better understanding of the other side because you're running an empire if you're running an empire you have to you know be responsible and that is that means you know, educate your citizen well and send them to different parts of the empire to learn about the empire, about the local population. Learn, teach, learn, teach, trade. If you want a peaceful planet, if you don't, continue doing what you're doing.